Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Sarah the Rainbow Hearted Witch. Please hit that like and subscribe button down below. So this week I will be giving my review of Ask the Witch. This is a 78 card uh, deck with guidebook. Edited by Francesca Mattioni, illustrated by Simone Pace. So we have this really pretty flip box. The book. Now, I don't understand why you have the box and then you have the cards in its own little tuck box. I don't necessarily like that. It's funny because the Hour Tarot did the same thing. It came in the same kind of box, which is huge. It doesn't fit. And then it came in a tuck box as well. Not sure why they felt the need to do that. I guess if you wanted to carry around your cards without carrying around the book, um, you can. So here's the top box. And then here are the cards. So I love the artwork, the cartoony kind of anime feel. Um, it definitely reminds me of Owl House. That's on Disney Channel. I love watching Owl House. Um, so I really enjoy the artwork. The book, I was a little disappointed in. I bought this because I really wanted to learn about, you know, quote unquote, witches throughout history. Um, but after using the Hour Tarot and then using this, it was kind of a disappointment. So let's look at the contents of the book. I'm going to move the cards here for a minute just so. So for the contents of the book. We have the Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck, the history and the stories of tarot cards. Which is in the tarot cards, how to use this deck, symbols of the major arcana, symbols of the minor arcana, reading and interpreting the tarot cards, the witch's messages. So for each card, we have a picture representation of the witch and the card. So for the Fool, we have Crazy Jane. Then we have the Witch's Spell, Spells, which it just is the card meaning. So you have positive and negative. So if you want to read positive would be upright, negative would be reversed. So I don't feel like one little paragraph is enough. It really, some of these, I read the paragraph and I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> so I'll just read you Crazy Jane. Next door to the home of the Irish poet and magician William Butler Yeats lived an elderly woman who was a bit mad. Because of her age and her mental state, she was very straightforward in expressing her thoughts. She was the poet's inspiration when he created the figure of Crazy Jane, the central character in a series of poems. She was old, promiscuous, witch-like, infantile, and daring. She spoke to God about her love and fearlessly addressed the bishop the symbol of conformity and morality. Fair and foul are near of kin, and fair needs foul, she told him in one poem, for nothing can be soul or whole that has not been wrecked. In other words, to exist means being willing to become unexpected things as well as their opposites, and to discover beauty where most see uselessness. Knowing that rips and wounds let the light come in. This extraordinary lady of the vagabonds in, is our introduction to the card of the fool, the free and infinite potential in each of us. She is the forerunner of the witches, goddesses, and women we will meet. And she holds them all in her rags, just as the number zero holds all the other numbers in its cosmic circle. Jane seems to sing out, recognize the magic in rivulets, 
in the patterns, in the dust, and in the stubborn trust that the heart has in life. There is a fragile balance between the sky and the earth, a game of leaves and the wind. It takes only an instant to fall, the same as it does to fly. So positive is potential, innocence, imagination, and freedom. And negative is aimlessness, superficia superficiality, and thoughtlessness. And then we're on to the next. So um, for the magician, we have Cirque. Um, so anyway, it's the book is okay. Um, it's not my favorite. <laughs> All right. So at the end of the book, we have becoming comfortable with the cards, create your own space, spreads, the card of the day, three card spread, the witch's harvest, which is a five card spread. And then we have the witch's message, um, just like a little overview on page 119. until page 126 and then we have about the um creator of the deck and the illustrator and then uh this was published by red wheel books in 2021 so yeah, this what had been in my wish list for a while and um it could literally just be because I just had finished working with our tarot. Let's see. And this book, as you guys remember in my previous flip through of this one, we have the book is quite a lot larger. It's, it's a full-size book, and there's over 300 pages in here. Let's see. There's about 350 pages. So this book is so hefty. And so by comparison, it's like, you know, we still have a full-page illustration, but instead of just one little paragraph, we get one, two, three, four, almost four full pages about the person and how it relates to the card. And so after this amazing book that um, Sarah Shipman did, going and using this book was a disappointment. I would have loved to have read more about each woman. Um, it just would have, I just wanted more. <laughs> I'll put it like that. But I do have to say, in terms of the artwork, like I said, I love the artwork. So I'm going to do a comparison. Um, of the two. So you can see that this deck, the Ask the Witch, is thicker than these cards. It stands just a little bit higher. You probably can't really... So let's see the thickness. These are a little thicker. These cards are obviously quite a bit smaller. They're like pocket size, where these ones are more traditional size. But yeah, you can see how whoop, my hand's in the way. They're lined up. And there's more. This one's just taller. So I do like the glossiness. I like the feel. Like these are not too thin and they have a nice gloss to them. They feel almost kind of like plasticky where these are feel more like um, the backs, especially it feels kind of like cardboard with um, colored print on it. Um, both shuffle well, like I have no problem shuffling either deck. So on Ask, the Witch for the Fool, we have Crazy Jane, 
which I'm gonna go through this because I don't know. And I like how on our tarot, um, we have the woman it represents right in here. So we have the fool and then Joan of Arc. And I think that also really helps with the association in your mind when you get the card and you're like, okay. For the Magician, we have Cirque and Marie Curie for our tarot. Oh, and then here's the back, so you can see it's kind of like a labyrinth, so that's pretty cool. I'm not going to say all these names. You guys can see. I'll put the book up here. I don't want to butcher names. Both have pretty diverse representation of women. And both, you know, have women from myth and mythology from all over the world. So that's nice. So on the Ask the Witch, we have Joan of Arc as strength and not the fool on this one. And we have um, Katie Sandwina for the Our Tarot. The Hermit, we have the Witch of Endor, and in the Outer Tower we have Emily Dickinson. The Wheel of Fortune, we have the Fates, and for Outer Tower we have Elizabeth I. For Justice, we have Sedna, and for Outer Tower we have Ida B. Wells. So depending on which artistic style you like better, if you like um, cartoon style and just kind of like fun and playful, it's definitely Ask the Witch. But if you want an actual history lesson and to learn about the women and their influence and how they are similar to the archetype of the card. Um, our tarot is amazing. The book alone for our tarot is just phenomenal. And okay, I have to say I love both of these tarot uh, the devil cards in these. I love that Lilith is the devil. And I actually do like the write-up that they wrote about Lilith in Ask the Witch. Like, they actually did a good job with this one. But I, I chalked it up to, I'm familiar with Lilith. I know who Lilith is. So it's some of the um, gods and or goddesses, I should say, or historical figures or what have you of some of the cultures that I don't, I'm not familiar with, that the book makes, I'm a little confused. I'm like, huh? Um, so you might, you just have to do some more research um, if you're interested with the Ask the Witch about, you know, the deity or goddess or um, figure in the cards. Where the Our Tarot, the book explains who they were and their influence and how they relate to the archetype so wonderfully so beautiful the star and ask the witch is a radio 
And then in our tarot, it's Anne Frank. And I love the moon in both of these as well. This is Hecate and then Mary Shelley. I mean, both are perfect representations. Best act for the sun and sister Rosetta is it Tharp. Tharpe? Tharp. Judgment. We have another Italian Strega. We have Buffana. Buffana for um, Ask the Witch. And then in our tarot, we have Sophia Dulip Singh. Now the world card, I don't, I, I don't know this um, goddess, so this one really doesn't explain it to me very well. Um, this is definitely one I would have to research more. Um, and then of course, our tarot is Amelia Earhart, which I think is a really cool representation of the world. Now, for the major arcana, you get even less than a paragraph. Well, maybe it's a paragraph, um, but it's just really condensed, and then you still get the positive and negative. Um, and there's not really witches in here. They don't. There's not an individual witch. It's just the card meanings. So there's nothing special. Where with our tarot, you still have a woman. You still have someone who's associated with a card and the archetype of the card. So... I was kind of bummed. I was expecting to have witches on Ask the Witch for the minors as well. But there's not. It's just a general generic meaning. But at least there's symbolism. It's not just a picture of the wands. So, you know, I'm happy that the four of wands, you have the four of wands and you have... Um, it looks like they're celebrating. Um, so, you know, that's good. I'm glad that there's some symbolism. Five of Wands. Again, you get a story. So I like that. I like that you can see a picture here. And then this one, of course, is the name. And what they do, which is kind of cool, is the wands is blue and kind of this greenish color. I kind of wish they'd pick like one color and stick with it, but that's okay. This one, it kind of looks like snakes. And then here you have the cat, which is fun. And then I don't know why they switched to like this golden kind of brown. <laughs> and of course, for our tarot, since they wanted it to um, be women and trans women, they have, um, instead of men, they have, instead of king, like the connotation with... Um, the masculine, even though feminine women have masculine energy within them as well, um, they just go with um, keeper of wands instead of saying king of wands. And then let me see. They still keep knight and let's see, page. So that's the only thing they do different is the king. Uh, king is keeper in the hour tarot. So the Ask the Witch is a little bit more traditional, like iconography, symbols, um, 
we have the heart with the three swords going through it, but we have that here as well. So the four of swords with um, our tarot with Helma AF Clint is a little more abstract where ask the witch, it's, you know, a traditional, you have the swords. It's like, you know, take rest. But at least here, she looks like she's resting, so that's kind of cool. And maybe it was just because I had the Ask the Witch in my cart before it was even released. I was super excited about it. And the Our Tarot, I mean, I didn't really know anything about it. It just happened to be there at the ninth house for the um, swap meet. And I took a chance on it. I thought it looked really cool. So, you know, the Our Tarot wasn't even on my radar. And that could be the difference is when you have no expectations for something, um, how can I let you down, right? And then with this one, I had I was so excited. I wanted it for like over a year. And when I finally got it and then see the book where it's really not that much, I was a little bummed. But if you want a more traditional Rider weight deck, definitely ask the witch. Like I, you can see traditional where um, our tarot is collage and it's the picture of, you know, for the most part of the person. Um, there's a few like this one where um, they don't have a picture of the, of the woman, but it's still a collage and it's, you know, it still flows. And then on the swords for this, you can see it's kind of this, golden color and then for pentacles we have a peachy pink so I think it's kind of cool that it is color coordinated like that So if you're really interested in learning about women, um, women's studies, women's history, her story, um, I definitely recommend the Our Tarot. Uh, it's just, the book is amazing. It's so phenomenal. But like I said, I love the artwork, so I don't regret it. I love the artwork of Ask the Witch. I've been binge watching Owl House. I love King. <laughs> King is so cute. So here's another one where we don't have a picture of this woman because she's Islam and or Muslim and she doesn't, they don't believe in taking pictures. So I like how they respected her um, religious beliefs or cultural beliefs. And then the cups are this kind of periwinkle blue, which is super pretty. I love this two of cups. I just, I love the owl. And um, this definitely reminds me of Hootie Who. I just want to be like, Hootie Who. Like, sorry if you guys haven't watched Owl House. I recommend watching it. It's cute.
So if you ask me which one was is my favorite, our tarot, hands down my favorite for the book. For the artwork, hands down, it's Ask the Witch. So I wouldn't be able to choose between these two because I love the cartoony anime feel of Ask the Witch. But the book for our tarot is amazing. I absolutely love the book. It's so well done. Sometimes you buy decks because you love the beautiful artwork. And sometimes you buy decks because you love the book. And if they don't have either, then maybe give those decks away. <laughs> So I will link my um, review of our tarot. I didn't. I don't think I really said too much more about it um, in this review. I just kind of go over the book a little more and things like that. But you can watch it if you would like. Have you? Have any of you worked with either one of these decks? Which one's your favorite? Could you choose between the two? I don't know if I could. So like this shuffles pretty well. It's it's a little slippery. So I have to kind of keep. And they're just, they're almost slightly too long for my hands. But not to the point where I can't shuffle overhanded like that. So it's not bad. And they just, because they are so glossy, I feel like I can get a good shuffle. Sometimes when they're really thick, uh, they don't shuffle well. All right, so we'll do a reading from, this is our card for the week, Six of Cups. So let's see what the book says. So you'll get an idea of what the minor arcana, are. so that's kind of cool that it came out with a minor. So Six of Cups. A small boy offers a cup full of blue flowers to a little girl, the same flowers that fill the other five cups placed on the walls outside the house. They are forget-me-nots. With the flowers, the two characters give one another the gift of childhood and its dreams, its experiences, and even its pains. Every now and then, it is good to go back to our early life for comfort and to strengthen the roots of our affection. In the Six of Cups, the memory of who we were appears, a memory we just promise we will never forget. Positive, childhood memories, family, and comfort. Negative, inability to escape the past, sentimentalism, abandoning the home. So you get an idea of what uh, the book's like. Again, it's only 126 pages. I say only, which that's really not bad. At least, you know, it's not just a little white book which I don't mind the little white books either. That's fine. Uh, different tarot decks offer different things. Um, so what do you prefer? Do you prefer a tarot deck with an amazing book or do you prefer a tarot with beautiful artwork? For me, it's hard. I like both. I like beautiful artwork and a great book. I don't mind collage style. I think collage is okay. And this is done really well, so it's cool. Um, some collage is can get a little, like, I think too much, but that's fine. So you guys can see I already have my orange and black with spiders out. I am ready for Halloween. My sister, like a week and a half ago, said... Summer was over and I was like, it's still August. Summer isn't over. But last week on Tuesday when Pumpkin Spice Latte came out, I drove the 30 minutes to the closest Safeway so I could get a Pumpkin Spice Latte, which I had never had Pumpkin Spice Latte, honestly, until I think it was like last year. I tried it. Um, I tried it at McDonald's, which, you know, I didn't like theirs. And then I tried Starbucks, which theirs was pretty good. Um, And so... This year, I was kind of, like, obsessed. I was like, when is it going to be pumpkin spice latte season? You know, I feel like I'm late to the party. I didn't want to be considered, you know, a quote-unquote basic bitch, which, whatever. I'm fine with being a basic witch. <laughs> no difference. Anyway, um, so I went 
we had went to that town. Uh, they have a public pool. But unfortunately, even though it states it was open until Memorial Day, it's not really open until Memorial Day. The public pool um, closed probably when school started, like the beginning of August. I hate how early school starts in Arizona. They go back to school so early. It's like so stupid. It's like summer isn't even close to being done here, even where we live, where it's so much cooler here than it is in Phoenix. And here, like we've had, we had a bonfire the other night and it's already like cool, cooling down. We had, some, we made some mores and it was just really nice out. So, I mean, it, the weather here is gorgeous, but not like fall yet. Like it's still warm. So we went to the pool, the pool was closed. So I was like, okay, it's pumpkin spice latte season. Got my pumpkin spice latte. And then um, last night I went to, we went to Tucson to D Dave and Buster's and got their jack-o'-lantern spiked milkshake. It was pretty good. It was, it was strong. Like don't go to Tubac, Arizona and order a drink. They will give you, they will charge you alcoholic prices for a non-alcoholic drink. They either water down their alcohol so much that it doesn't taste like alcohol anymore or they just plain up don't like put alcohol in their margaritas. So um, if you go to Tubac, Arizona, don't order any margaritas there or any alcoholic beverage because it doesn't taste like alcohol. So um, Dave and Buster's hooked it up. It was funny because I even asked for it to be supercharged because I was so afraid they wouldn't put actually any alcohol in it. And they're like, we can't do that for that drink. And I was like, that's fine. But I was pleasantly surprised that you could actually like taste alcohol without it being like overbearing. So that is why I have my orange nail polish on and my runner, my table runner for Halloween. I am getting ready for Halloween now. Hey, it's the beginning of September. Might as well enjoy September and October for Halloween season. Are you guys decorated yet? Do you have your decorations out? Let me know down in the comments below. And I will see you guys Thursday. This Thursday we have an interview with Gloria of Rise and Shine Hypnotherapy. She's amazing. It's another great interview. I'm sorry about last week's interview with Joey. I didn't realize that the file had gotten corrupted on the original when I filmed it. It was fine. It wasn't glitchy. And then uh, when we edited it, it was fine. It wasn't glitchy. And when we transferred it to um, from one system to another, like one program to another, it, it corrupted the file and made it glitchy. So I think we're going to try to um, record over it or record it from the original. I don't know. We're going to try and I'll just re-upload it because... That interview with Joey, like, she is so dynamic. She's such a great teacher. I highly recommend classes with her. I just had a reading with her last week, and it, it she called me out. She called me out, and, um, you know, she, what she got for the cards is what I've been getting for readings as well. So, um, Joey is amazing, so I definitely recommend if you're in the Arizona, you know, area and you're near Sierra Vista, Go check her out at Strega. So anyway, thank you guys. I will see you all on Thursday and again next week. Bye guys. Hey everyone. Thank you so much for watching my video. I had so much fun uploading it. I upload videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them out. I also have a buy me a coffee if you would like to support this channel monetarily. So uh, the links are down below and I will see you all next week. Bye guys.